Hi, this is Nate Baranowski, and I will be explaining Autodesk Sketchbook Designer today. We'll start with the general layout of the program. Off to the left, we have the Brush Manager, where you can adjust the size or intensity of the stroke. And at the top, we have the Vector-Based Toolbar, because we are on a vector layer currently. It changes once you go to a paint layer. And in the Vector Toolbar, we have Brush Options, Selection Options, and Restroke Options. Off to the right, we have the Layer Manager, where you can go between vector and paint-based layers and move them around and create new ones. Up at the top in the menu, there is a Layer link where you can actually create new layers or adjust layer opacities in that option. Off to the right, I will just show how to change the layer setup. As you can see here, I'm dragging the page icon so that the layers will change order. I'm selecting the pencil brush and will begin making some basic lines to show some of the power of Sketchbook Designer. As you can see, when I make the first stroke, it's not that smooth of a line, but the program actually can smooth out my line for me. Off to the left in the Brush Manager, you can change the size and intensity of the brush. So I can increase the stroke and decrease the intensity to make for a more gray stroke, which could be used for brainstorming lines. Uh, but as you can see, that second line was changed to a much thicker and more gray line. Now, adding some more curves, I will show you how to restroke a curve for a, um, a better, more smooth, uh, congruent line by dragging the um, points on each side. There will be an option to create a whole new line, which if your line comes out not very smooth at the beginning, you can definitely turn it into a much more smooth line through just dragging points around. With a selection option, you can take a line and add grips to it. So where before this one had three grips, these points allow you to drag the line at different areas and this is different than any other sketching program because it allows you to adjust a line like you would say in Adobe Illustrator um, because it is vector based. Um, up here at the top there is a duplicate curve option uh, which can be very helpful when you are creating something that needs to be in a line. Now I'll show you the power of the ellipse function here, by clicking this uh, button next to the line one time it will actually take what I tried to make as an ellipse just by hand and it will turn it into an ellipse, a perfect ellipse, which is handy when drawing tires or, uh, or gears. If you click it twice it will actually turn that line into a circle. So one click um, adjust it, smooths it, and two clicks will actually standardize it. So a squiggly line could become an ellipse, and then a circle or a dash line could become um, a straight one. Here is a um, just random nozzle that I created with line work, and I am in the paint, sorry, no, I am in the vector layer still, but I am adding a fill to it like you would just in a old time paint. So I'm going up to the color wheel and adjusting the colors here. And I can apply it to any closed area. Um, and this is great because you do not have to um, brush it in. It's very quick. You can put on some quick colors and just see what it looks like. Uh, and this is all done in the vector layer still. I am not in the paint layer yet. Um, so now I'm going to add some color to the nozzle here and you can actually go up to the top and select a linear fill and put a gradient on the nozzle um, and looking in here it allows you to 
change where your gradient is by dragging the points. You may change the colors in your gradient. So this nozzle will be more of a have some metallic sheen to it, let's say. Um, so this is a very quick way to do it without actually having to brush in anything. Um, it's very mathematical and doesn't require a whole lot of finesse. Now I'm in the paint layer and in the paint layer it's a whole new toolbar on top and I'm taking the magic wand and clicking on these two areas while holding shift and that will actually create a uh, bounding box around it so that when I go up to the airbrush select it and with a um, black color I can go through and create some shadows to this form and give it a little, little bit more three dimension three dimensionality that's the word um, make it look three dimensional so um, I'm applying this to both colors. Let's say that darker blue is a grit material or rubber over-molded over part. And uh, so this is just adding some darkness to it. And I can also go up and uh, change the size of it and add maybe some highlights. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoy the program.